This is ABC 7 News at 5.30. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. A redevelopment effort is in the works for a busy stretch of the Sun Coast. Plans to transform Sarasota's North Trail may include an apartment complex and popular coffee chain. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo is live in Sarasota with more on the story tonight. Dwayne? Well, Scott, business owners around the North Trail say both those major projects is the jolt this area needs to revitalize. North Tamiami Trail, once struggling to flourish, is now starting to see the light. It has had its reputation, but now it's, it's on an up, upside. Just recently, Benderson Development and the city made the next move in building a Starbucks coffee shop south of the Ringling College campus. Chairman of the North Trail Redevelopment Partnership, Jay Patel, says the national chain has been looking for a spot in the area for the past decade. It's a very good news that uh, Starbucks has shown some confidence in the trail and we hope that others will follow. I think there's a, there's a lot of desire to get off campus a little bit, even if it is just across the street. Um, a lot of desire for just something that isn't your everyday cafeteria food. The majority of Ringling students also in favor of growth. Also in the works, another developer is looking to build an apartment complex adjacent to the proposed site of the coffee shop. We're in desperate need of it, frankly. Uh, Ringling is growing uh, just immensely, which is awesome. Patel, listing a number of successful new businesses on the trail, says he has a vision of what he sees the area to be in the near future. Something like Palm Springs, California, where you have unique uh, hippie, not hippie completely, but I would say much more fun places and fun businesses on the trail. Telling everyone this trend of bringing businesses to the area could be the catalyst for change on the North Trail. I want to tell others who are into the development community and the real estate uh, business, look at the North Trail. Don't just pass it by. Who knows, you might be missing on an opportunity that you would say, I wish I would have done this a couple of years ago. Now, both the city and Benderson development are still discussing the protection of trees in the area. So now the city is currently waiting on revised plans from the developer in order to move forward. Reporting live in Sarasota, Dwayne Lindo, your Suncoast News. Dwayne, thank you. Now to a developing story out of Boston. Several people are hurt after a taxi cab plowed through a crowd near Boston's Logan International Airport. The driver appears to have lost control and drove up onto an area where many cab drivers were standing, taking a break. Massachusetts State Police say 10 pedestrians were injured, some seriously, but the accident does not appear to be intentional. Police say the 56-year-old driver stepped on the gas pedal instead of the brake. A Pennsylvania man is now under arrest in a road rage killing that made national headlines. This photo from a highway traffic camera shows Bianca Robertson's car and a red pickup truck jockeying for position as they merged in traffic. Well, tensions escalated, and then police say David Desper took out his 40 caliber handgun and shot the recent high school graduate. Authorities say they got a lot of tips from the public after they released pictures and videos of Desper's truck, but their search for the suspected killer came to an end when the 28-year-old turned himself in yesterday. He's now charged with first-degree murder. Somebody didn't want her to merge into a lane of traffic. And because of that, a young woman is dead today. Police say this is not a hate crime. As for the family, they say the arrest has not eased their pain. Bianca was just days away from attending her college orientation. Now to a scare in the air. This weekend, a United flight makes an emergency landing after the engine catches fire. It's just the latest plane incident in what has been a dangerous weekend for flying. ABC's Danya Backus explains. Passengers told to evacuate this United Express flight as flames shoot out of the jet's engine Sunday. People towards the back of the plane were urging others to, like, you know, move more quickly, keep moving. The flight operated by SkyWest from Aspen had just landed in Denver when that engine caught fire. Five dozen passengers forced onto the tarmac as firefighters rush in. And just last week... Another scare in the air, this time on an Air Asia flight going from Australia to Kuala Lumpur. The plane shaking so violently in the sky, passengers prepared for the worst. We thought there was a good chance that we were going to go down. Even the pilot issued an ominous warning. And also, please uh, listen to the everything. 
Our survival depends on your cooperating. 90 minutes into the flight, the pilot forced to turn back. This weekend, smaller plane crashes across the U.S., some deadly. This is the most uh, bodies I've seen at one time. Investigators in Wisconsin trying to figure out what caused a Cessna 421 to go down Saturday morning, killing six people heading to Canada for a fishing trip. In Georgia, debris spreading for half a mile after a small plane crash there, killing four members of one family. And in California, miraculously, only injuries reported when a twin engine Cessna plummets from the sky, crashing on the 405 freeway. And today, investigators are still looking into what caused all of those situations. Donya Backus, ABC News, Los Angeles. Some scary moments today near Walt Disney World. A hot air balloon landed in a pond near the theme park in Orlando this morning. Florida Highway Patrol says the pilot was trying to land in a field off the turnpike but ended up in the pond. The pilot told troopers that as he was coming in for a landing, the wind shifted and moved him in a different direction. 16 people were on board. One boy was rushed to the hospital after swallowing water, but no one else was hurt. One passenger from Denmark says he wanted to take his girlfriend out for a nice experience before they went back home. It was scary, but it, I mean, and now we, we're kind of making fun of it, but it was serious, right? It, it's lucky that no one got hurt. Because a crew spent about an hour removing the hot air balloon from the pond, which, by the way, contained multiple alligators. How about that? All right, let's get another check on our weather with uh, Steve Newman, who's in for Bob tonight. Steve? Thanks, Scott. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have been under a shower that passed by today, you could have gotten up to a half inch of rainfall. I got four tenths at my house from a storm uh, late morning to noontime. And this line of thunder showers that has been passing through the heart of Florida is dissipating and its coverage area is reducing as well. But we did get one fairly heavy shower that came from about Parrish uh, Lakewood Ranch and dissipated, but it's trying to redevelop now to warm mineral springs to Northport. But all in all, this is going to diminish in the next few hours. Here's our RPM, our actually high resolution future cast takes us through the overnight. It didn't initialize well because these are already gone, but you can see. Clearing skies, winds uh, offshore uh, for the balance of the evening until we get the heating of the day tomorrow and more onshore winds and the sea breeze will kick in. These are forecast temperatures through the overnight hours showing slow cooling to around 76, 77 degrees and the chance of rain for the next few hours overnight. Still 30% chance because of that shower down around uh, Northport, but it drops off to near zero overnight. Our 4th of July detailed forecast and a look at the tropics coming up, Scott, in just a couple of minutes. All right, thank you, Steve. As people flock to Suncoast Beaches this Independence Day holiday, there are some very important things to keep in mind, especially if you're heading to Anna Maria Island. As ABC 7's Rick Adams explains, law enforcement will be cracking down on those not obeying strict beach rules. Well, with the 4th of July holiday now upon us, there are certain rules beachgoers here on Anna Maria Island need to follow. It's something authorities take very seriously. It's one of the first things people driving to the beach notice when they arrive on Anna Maria Island. A sign of what's not allowed on the beach, and then they see another sign as they walk onto the beach. The strict rules is getting some mixed reaction from people at the beach. You want to be able to come out and have a good time? Um, having said that, I also believe that Anna Maria has gotten very busy and as you can see sometimes the tents are three tents deep just to get to the water, so you do need some kind of organization. Connor Springmeyer echoed those sentiments. He and his family are visiting Anna Maria Island from Chicago. It's understandable, you know, they want to keep the beach clean for everyone, you know, it's one of the best beaches in America. They want to have it, you know, available for everyone, but it also can inhibit the fun sometimes. The main rules and regulations for the beaches on Anna Maria Island include no fireworks, no grills, no alcohol, no glass, no pets, and no bikes. First-time offenders face a $75 fine and then it goes up from there. Holmes Beach Police tell us they will be beefing up their patrol on the beaches over the 4th of July holiday. We have, um extra guys working beach patrol for this the holidays we also have the sheriff's office out they have two deputies out on horses and there's also a um, another group of guys for crowd control many beachgoers are happy that law enforcement takes such a proactive approach especially during the holidays it makes sense while they're doing it just to keep everyone safe i think law enforcement is obviously a great thing when it's needed again i think 
you also need to be able to come to the beach to relax and not worry and look over your shoulder every five minutes too. And one more thing to keep in mind as you're enjoying all the holiday festivities, there is a noise ordinance in place from 10 p.m. until 7 a.m. Reporting from Anna Maria Island, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Rick. And there are lots of events planned to celebrate the 4th of July across the Suncoast tomorrow. The fireworks spectacular over Sarasota Bay starts at around 9 o'clock. The show is free, can be viewed from anywhere in downtown Sarasota along the Bayfront or in Island Park. The 27th annual 4th of July fireworks display over Siesta Key Beach will also start around 9. And in Venice, fireworks are fired off from the South Jetty, the South Venice Jetty area just after sunset. For a full list of the 4th of July events here on the Sun Coast, you can go to our website, mysuncoast.com. Every Monday night for nearly 20 years, Sarasota's 5 o'clock club hosted a Monday night open mic. Tonight is the first Monday night without it. The owner of the club is selling the establishment. He says there simply isn't as much interest in live music as there once was. The club first opened back in 1955 as a blues bar, but soon included reggae, rock and roll, and everything in between. The music venue hosted big names like Dickie Betts of the Allman Brothers, Andy Summers of the Police, and Buddy Miles. The owner didn't tell us who's buying the club, but he did say they plan to keep live music going in some capacity. You can have a, a CD, you can have a, a vinyl, but feel it. Feel it when it's being played is, is the best you can ever be. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, we'll look back on the history of the 5 o'clock club and at the future of live music here on the Sun Coast. Still to come in your Suncoast news, is your allergy real? Why many people who think they are allergic to penicillin really aren't. Plus, a warning for everyone who likes home improvement projects. A dangerous light fixture is being recalled. I'll tell you which one, coming up. Now's the perfect time to work with California Closets. During our Shades of White event, save up to 20% on our beautiful white finishes for any space in your home. Contact us today for your free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. How long have we been married, then? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years. We decided on Meals on Wheels because I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It's one of the best feelings in the world. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Explore amazing merchants on the Sun Coast. Find great prices, products, and services. 
go to mysuncoast.com to buy local today. Now's the perfect time to work with California Closets. During our Shades of White event, save up to 20% on our beautiful white finishes for any space in your home. Contact us today for your free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. It's the most commonly reported drug allergy, but now a new study shows that far fewer of us might have this allergy than we think. ABC's Emily Rao has the new findings on penicillin. Antibiotics, nearly a century old, they are the drugs that have drastically changed the way that doctors treat infections. And the giant in the field is penicillin. Millions of Americans identify themselves as being allergic to penicillin. But is this actually true? In a new study, researchers at the Medical College of Wisconsin say that most of those who think they're allergic may be wrong. They tested 100 children who, according to their parents, had reactions to penicillin like rash, itchy skin, and nausea. Every single one tested negative for penicillin allergy, so their symptoms must have come from something else. The researchers didn't test kids whose parents reported high-risk reactions like breathing problems, harder blood pressure issues, or blisters. Still, those with a history of low-risk reactions are usually switched over to other antibiotics, which can sometimes mean the treatment isn't as effective. So, think you have a penicillin allergy? Are you sure? With this Medical Minute, I'm Emily Rao. Let's get another check on our weather with Steve Newman in for Bob tonight. Hey, Scott, some of us got wet today. If you were in Lakewood Ranch and Parrish, uh, you can see these showers coming by this afternoon, 2, 3, dissipating about 4 o'clock. Skies have cleared since then. Anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch of rain was likely in many spots if you were directly underneath it, but a lot of people did not get a drop of rain. Currently, it's 86 at the airport, dew point 76, humidity 72 percent. It feels a little more moist than that. If you look at the highs and lows, we were pretty close to normal for this time of year within a degree on both counts, but it certainly felt hot today. I think the humidity may have been up, and if you factor in that heat, here's your heat index. It feels like 102 on Longbow Key, 101 at Siesta Key because of that, even with the water all around you. Venice 100, 100 in Mayaca City, 101 at Punta Gorda. Relief is on its way this evening, though. You can see the scattered showers and th storms that went through the heart of Florida are on the dissipation stage right now. They're maturing and sending out outflow boundaries. Hopefully we'll get some of that cool air blowing over the sun coast for the balance of the evening, and that'll cool us back down to the low 80s, hopefully, by uh, sunset. But the one shower is still trying to develop around uh, uh, warm mineral springs and far northeastern, northwestern part of um, uh, our county to the south of us, of course, of Charlotte County. Taking a look at the tropics, we have an area of interest in the Atlantic. It's just blown off the coast of Africa. It's an easterly wave, and it has a 70% chance of developing within the next five days, not so much in the next two days. We don't have to worry about that for a while. and Nothing at all to worry about in the Caribbean. It remains very quiet. Yeah, same for the Gulf of Mexico, but the water temperature is heating up. Hardly a cloud out there now, but uh, with that heat, it's the fuel for additional storms we may get developed later on in the hurricane season. Already in the mid to upper 80s in the Gulf, that area where that tropical wave is is only around 80, 82 degrees. That's the minimum for really getting tropical storm development. If we look at the pressure wind forecast for the next week, showing something developing right to the east of uh, the Lesser Antilles and moving up toward Bermuda, that would be next Sunday. This is way out in the future, and the models have been the path of it has not been right on there, but you got an idea that the Atlantic hurricane season is beginning to heat up just a little bit. Here's our RPM computer forecast for tonight and the 4th of July, showing high pressure in place, scattered showers during the afternoon and evening, and then they dissipate overnight, and that pattern will again tomorrow. This is about the time for the fireworks tomorrow, 9 to 9.30, scattered showers around, but they would be brief and might not even happen at all. Don't have that higher resolution that far out on this computer model. If you're going to the beach, uh, going to have some great weather. It's going to be hot as a firecracker tomorrow on the 4th of July. Scattered showers and thunderstorms, but that'll be mainly during the afternoon and evening hours. If you're going to Siesta Key, the weather should be pretty sunny and hot with temperatures uh, reaching the upper 80s, 88. Uh, but again, with that feel-like index, it could feel into the 90s. And if we look at the 4th of July forecast, here it comes. We're going to start off as we have for the last few days with mostly sunny in the morning, 87 at 2 p.m., and then partly cloudy skies increase, 90. And by the time the fireworks go off around 9 p.m., 87 degrees with a 30% chance of showers. 
And here's the seven day outlook showing that we have that increasing chance on Wednesday and Thursday up to 50, 60, where it'll stay in that range right on through next weekend. But temperatures averaging pretty close to seasonal normal. And I think tomorrow you're going to like it if you can get near the water and cool off. Scott. All right, Steve, thank you. The phone that sparked a global crisis for Samsung is now making a comeback. Samsung is launching a new phone made from the recalled Galaxy Note 7s. This refurbished, less expensive phone will be available in South Korea starting this Friday. The company is renaming it the Galaxy Note FE, short for Fan Edition. Samsung was forced to recall Galaxy Note 7s after several of them exploded in flames. The FE has lower capacity batteries and went through extensive testing. Samsung will not sell the new version of the phone in the United States. Home improvement shoppers may want to pay attention to this recall. Home Depot is recalling vanity light fixtures from Design Solutions International with Home Depot. The company says the light shades can detach and then fall. Home Depot says it's received more than 100 reports of shades falling and at least two people have gotten hurt. The fixtures come in three and four light models and were sold between December of 2014 and March of this year. Tesla is set to release its first mass market electric vehicle this week. The CEO of the company, Elon Musk, tweeted that the Model 3 has passed all of its requirements. The first one is expected to be finished on Friday. Tesla's plan is to produce 100 versions in August and then ramp up production to 20,000 cars by December. Pre-orders for these cars were opened about a year ago and more than 300,000 people have already placed a deposit. These electric vehicles have a price tag of about $35,000, much less than the previous Tesla vehicles, but they do have a range of more than 200 miles on one charge. Entertainment News is next. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Going on now. For every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate... Or shop at Goodwill... I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. The Furniture Warehouse. Save big during the 4th of July clearance and pay no interest for 48 months with same-day pickup or next-day delivery. This special purchase double reclining sofa for only $4.99. The special purchase white Florida bedroom for $5.99 and the matching nightstand is free. The special purchase Serta Perfect Sleeper Queen set for $3.99. Exclusively at the Furniture Warehouse in Sarasota, Bradenton, Veniceport, Charlotte, and Ellington. And save it. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned my victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability, has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. 
In entertainment news, Maria Menounos is stepping down from her anchor job at E! News as she faces treatment for a brain tumor. The 39-year-old told People magazine she was diagnosed with the tumor in April and recently underwent surgery to remove the golf ball size growth. Menuno says 99.9% of the tumor was removed, but there is a small chance it could come back. He says Menounos is leaving the network after three years. She's also caring for her mother, who has stage four brain cancer. The man who promoted the, the uh, fire festival, a big swanky event pitched at Millennials, is now facing criminal charges. The festival was supposed to take place in the Bahamas. Ticket buyers were told Blink-182 and Migos were going to perform there, but the performers bailed. The festival never came together, and the show was canceled. The promoter, Billy McFarland, is charged with scheming to defraud investors in his company, and he's now free on bail. Grammy Award winner Adele is asking her fans for forgiveness after canceling two sold-out weekend shows. Adele telling her fans early Saturday that she could not perform the shows in London because her vocal cords are damaged. Her Hello Tour would have included a total of 123 performances had Adele gone ahead with the two shows. Adele says refunds will be available if those shows cannot be rescheduled. The oldest Willis daughter has something to celebrate. Rumor Willis, the daughter of Demi Moore and Bruce Willis, is announcing a milestone with her sobriety on Instagram. In a heartfelt post, the Dancing with the Stars winner telling fans she's been sober for six months now. While acknowledgement acknowledged uh, she is not perfect, she says she is proud of her accomplishment. Her younger sister, Tallulah Willis, completed a substance abuse and eating disorder rehab program in 2014. Kensington Palace says the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge will take Prince George and Princess Charlotte along when they tour Germany and Poland. The palace says in a statement today, the five-day tour beginning July 17th in Warsaw will feature appearances by the children. The trip is being seen as an effort to bolster Britain's goodwill ties with Europe. And we'll be right back with more news. Stay with us.